Well, summer may be coming to an end, but there's lots still to look forward to in the autumn, as our guest tonight has not one, two or three, but four major film and television releases planned. Yeah, alongside the director of one of those films, Sean Ellis, it's Jamie Dornan. <laughs> Welcome both. Thank you very much. Great to see you. So, the premiere is tonight of your new film, Anthropoid, mm -hmm. um, which we'll chat a bit about later. But we hear that actually the critic you'll be most eager to please is your dad, Jim. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's right. Uh, look, you know, anyone who's got... Uh, um, but, you know, my dad definitely shows a very keen interest in, in um, my career and often will give me, um, like, his version of notes. So, so what, of course, yeah, what does he say? <laughs> Well, I'll sort of tell him what the next project I'm doing is, and then he'll often send, like, <laughs> an email. He'll be watching this. He'll love it. Um, <laughs> hi, Dad. Yeah, he'll, hi, Dad. He'll, uh, he'll send me an email of, like, thoughts. Not notes, just thoughts. Oh, of, every uh, character? Of how to approach, how to approach the character. Um, he doesn't, I don't even send him a script, so he's just doing it off, you know, whatever. Yeah. But for, for, for every project... I see what you're saying, see what yeah. you're getting at. Um, <laughs> need some notes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I got some notes from him on this. Yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah. He, he, what, what, yeah but his, you know, he's, Jamie's temper or well, just how to direct it. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> it's good that he's showing an interest. Yeah. It is, yeah. Isn't it? Yeah, it's true. It's true. Well, we chat all about the film uh, very shortly. Now, anyway, guys, Anthropoid, based on a true story in the Czech Republic from World War Two, the mm -hmm. assassination attempt on a senior uh, Nazi officer. How? how Hard was it, or easy, to identify with the two characters you play alongside Killian Murphy, of course? Yeah. Uh, to be honest, that was one of the biggest draws for me about the, the story, was that uh, well, Killian was already attached when it came my way, so uh, I didn't really have a choice on who I was sort of up for. Um, but uh, to be honest, I would have been drawn more towards Jan Kubisch anyway, because he struggles with the challenge more than... And Killian's character is very much in control of the situation. And, uh, and Jan has anxiety attacks and, and, and uh, very much feels that he's in over his head and, and, and um, they're fighting a losing battle and he's questioning it the whole time. And the reality is, as much as I like to think I'd be all like brave in these situations, and uh, the reality is I'd probably be the same. Mm. I, you know, I'd probably have anxiety attacks and, and feel the same way. So I find that very um, identifiable. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and actually, you know, I think you'll agree with this, that they're what I find relatable, I think, from an audience point of view, is that they are just normal guys. They are abnor they're normal guys thrust into an abnormal situation. They're, they're not super soldiers and they're not superheroes. They're just men mm -hmm. and women who are trying to fight against something that was heinous. And um, they're just sort of doing their best in that situation, which I find mm -hmm. relatable. And you saw, well, you heard about the story 15 years before it was actually made. I mean, it became a real labour of love for you, Sean, didn't yeah. it? How hard was it to actually get it made in the end? Because you did it all yourself, practically, didn't you? It was pretty difficult. Um, yeah, it was about f 2001, I saw a documentary about it, and I didn't know anything about it, and so I started to research it, and I started to think it would make a great movie. Mm. So I um, started to collate lots of data and and documents and stuff like that. And then about 2006, we sat down and we started to figure out how to tell the story as a film. Um, so, yeah, it's, uh, it's been a long journey. What, what drew you to the story, then, in particular? I think I was quite obsessed with, like, Jan and Josef and what it would have been like to be them and given this mission. Because, as Jamie says, you know, people were thrust into different jobs during the war, mm. you know, and you would be a baker one day and uh, you'd be fighting on the fields all buns glazing the next oh. day. Oh. Uh, that was one of Killian's jokes. <laughs> well, we mentioned uh, you star uh, yeah. alongside Killian Murphy, who, of course, many viewers will be familiar with from Peaky Blinders mm -hmm. as the assassins who altered the course of history. Yeah. And so we can see from this tense moment. Very tense. Yeah. All you want to know is what happens <laughs> next after yeah. that point, yeah. isn't yeah. it? Yeah. And based on, on true events, very important in Czechoslovak history, was every detail close to the facts? Well, with the historical facts, I try not to deviate too much because they're the facts. And, and, but where you can dramatise the, the, you know, the, the, um, and be a storyteller is with the, with the characters and you can build the relationships and we don't really know what they said together. So that's where you really mine the story. But I tried to, we tried to keep really 
accurate with the with the with the historical events because we wanted it to be authentic. Mm. Mm. And the premiere happened in Prague, didn't it? So and the, and the Czechs received it really well. I mean, that must have been so flattering for you, having having made the film. Yeah, it's a story that they're incredibly proud of, and so they should be. It's a massive part of their history that's been buried for really a long time. Because, yeah. You know, after the war, um, communism came in, and it was sort of frowned upon this act. So it was kind of, in a weird way, it was buried. And it's only recently it's sort of come to light again, and, and people are very proud of what the, the Czech parachutists did. So, mm. you know, it's a great celebration to be able to tell the world that story. Killian yeah. mm. Murphy's your, your co-star, and you yeah. have it sort of, as characters, slightly abrasive relationship sometimes but an interesting dynamic yes what was it like working with him well i mean uh, it's tricky because uh, killian and i are very very fond of each other and, and we you know it's very irish to show love through sort of slagging each other off and i've been <laughs> <laughs> so you can do that now <laughs> no i'm just like i try so hard to be sincere um, <laughs> But I can do it, I can do it, I can do it. Um, but, like, the honest truth is, uh, I, I was a massive fan of Killian's before, yeah. you know, um, not just because I'm Irish, I just think being a young actor and, and the way he's approached his career and, and, the, and the variety of work he's done from blockbuster films to Batman stuff to, you know, low budget movies to television to Irish theatre to everything, you know, I think he's got such a good balance in his, in his career. And then it turns out, you know, he's the loveliest fella in the world. So um, we had a... We, God, that's hard to say. He's going to rib you now, isn't he? <laughs> no, I don't. Uh, but he is, and, 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 and you know... Is all this true? Sure. I had it good is. fun with the boys, I have to say. Yeah, it's very entertaining working with them. But we've got to be thankful to Sean a bit, you know, for, for casting us together. And um, it's a gamble. It's, it, it, it's a, when it's a, basically like a two-hander, it's a bit of a gamble that you might not... See eye to eye with the other person, and yeah. it's not always. I think the fact we're both Irish maybe helps, but uh, it was a gamble that worked for you anyway. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. It's Thank a terrific you. Terrific film. Really is good. Thank you so much. Uh, Anthropoid is in cinemas from Friday the 9th of September. Now, um, now, as we know, Operation Anthropoid is a true story, but regular viewers to the show will know, you see, mm. that um, we tell many stories from World War II, and some sound a bit more like a film plot sometimes than reality. Mm. So. Joe is here with more tales from that era, and he's going to outline them for us in best one-show history reporter style. We'd like <laughs> you guys, if you wouldn't mind, to try to decide whether they really happened or just plots for okay. films. OK? okay leave this to me. So here we go. <laughs> right, <Joe>. Pictures <laughs> of the scene, OK? Yeah. It's April 1943. Yeah. The body of a Royal Marine is washed up just off the coast of Spain. Cuffed to his wrist is a briefcase full of top-secret documents. But yeah. all is not as it seems. The body is, in fact, that of a homeless man from Wales, and the documents are false. An audacious attempt to dupe the Nazis. Fact or film? Mm, what do you reckon? What are you going with? I'm going with fact. Me too. Operation Mincemeat. Oh, 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 very oh, good. Oh, expert. Exactly that. So, Operation Mincemeat um, was, as we just said, a very audacious attempt to mislead the Nazis. It was very successful. The man in question uh, was, a, was a poor guy who'd actually committed suicide. His right. body was taken over by the authorities. They gave him a new identity, and they planted him in the water off Spain with these documents. They were targeting a very specific spy, a German spy, in that part of Spain. And sure enough, the documents made it into his hands. And the Nazis bought it. And they suddenly believed that our invasion of Italy would go through Sardinia and Greece, not through Sicily, which was the obvious way of doing it. And therefore, Hitler moved some of his forces out of Sicily and there was less resistance when the invasion came. So, Brilliant. Yeah. Okay, the next and one's... made into a film. The yes, yes that's right. right. Exactly. Um, the next one's a bit that's harder. How you OK, here we go. Okay. 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 Here we go. <laughs> so, <laughs> France, 1944. Our hero is Christina. She's a former Polish beauty queen turned spy and she's wanted by the Nazis. Mm -hmm. In a bold attempt to rescue three resistance fighters who are due to be executed by the Nazis, she goes into a Gestapo prison. There are wanted posters with her face on all around and single-handedly she frees her fellow fighters. Fact or film? Sounds like, um... Operation Bolognese. <laughs> <laughs> We're overcooking it now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna say, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say, that's, I find that quite a probable story. I think that's that's fact. Really? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. It's fact. Yeah. Two out of two. It is indeed oh, fact. Oh, very good. Very good.
So this was uh, Christina Scarbeck. Uh, she was uh, an incredible spy. She was thought Thank to you. be uh, Churchill's favourite spy, in fact. Um, and what she does is the ultimate bluff. She goes into this prison and she says to them, hey, look, I'm a British agent, and let me tell you this, the invasion's coming. Now, she didn't actually know that was the case. It turned out it was the case. And she said, the only way to save yourself is to start releasing prisoners. And these three here are ideal candidates. In fact, I'm married to one of them, release them. And after a three-hour conversation with the prison captain, that's exactly what happened. She walks out oh. with these three prisoners. Yeah. Uh, incredible story. Saves her lives. We've got 30 seconds okay, for quickly, one quickly. last okay, one. Right. Last pitch for you. So it's, Ju it's June 1944. D-Day is imminent. A German army doctor is so desperate to know when the Allies will invade that he kidnaps an American intelligence agent, OK? He drugs him and he convinces him it's 1950, the war is over, and that he can now divulge the plans. Fact or film? I'm going to go film on that one. It should be a film. <laughs> it is a film. 1976 film, 36 well, Hours, well, starring well, James Gardner, really based well. on yeah. Beware of the Dog, the short Roald Dahl story. Well Excellent. Thank you, Joe. <laughs> See, Jodie and Christina shouldn't work, but it really does. Yes, it does. They're a perfect combination. Yeah. Yeah. You guys, where did you go on holiday as a child? Together. <laughs> <laughs> you go back uh, sir, such a long way. Um, we mostly went camping in France. Yeah. We got the ferry over and... Uh, and through, I don't remember a huge amount about it, but we, we, that's definitely where we went. That's right. Yeah. Sean, did you go to the Isle of Wight? I did. Did you bump into Jodie Kidder? Right? Butlins. Butlins. <laughs> Butlins, Isle of Wight. Very black nice. and chai. Black, black, black and chai. That's it. Yeah. That's where I went. We as a kid. went there. What yeah. a brilliant place. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, let's talk about the fall. <laughs> Jamie, the fall is uh, is coming back for another series in, in which you play a much less heroic character than uh, oh, yeah. Nancy yeah. Point. Yeah, yeah. But, um, it's really changed your career, didn't it? That role. Yeah, I do think so. Yeah, I mean, certainly professionally, it totally changed my life, um, and I'm forever grateful to it. You know, um, I would play that character as as horrible as he is. I'd play him for the rest of my life if someone gave me the option. You know, so. Um, yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's also that thing, four and a half years into it now, they're like family to me, you know, yeah. the crew. Yeah. The same crew for all three series, you know, so... Um, we see you there at the end of the second yeah. series. Yeah. Oh, you just think, well, where can you go from here? Well, well that's the, the, that's the million-dollar yeah, question, that's it, isn't that's it? it? But it's so... I mean, I watched the first series and I got so tense that I had backache at one point because it was that <laughs> frightening. I mean, for the third series... It would be really creepy if I'd come in behind Yeah, it would be really, that. really <laughs> grim, really grim. How much darker can your character actually get, then? Well, it's... I mean, I guess there hasn't been an intention to try to do that, though we haven't been mm, trying to you show know it's happening, any darker. Though. The proof is in the pudding, I think, so far. Um, but it goes in uh, quite an unexpected uh, place, the Series 3, I will say, without giving too much away. Um, and Alan Kubit, who created it, and I are very close, and I didn't even really see coming what really? he had planned for it. So, yeah. yeah. Unfortunately, you, you get a break from that because you've got other projects in the pipeline as mm -hmm. well, of course, haven't you? Yeah, I've got a lot coming out, <laughs> a lot coming out at the moment. <laughs> it's, sort of, it's just this very strange thing, and you never plan this, uh, and I certainly wouldn't have planned it this way, but I've got four different projects coming out on different platforms in the next yeah. five weeks. So yeah. I'm doing a lot of... to remind myself of what I'm doing press for. Everybody. Well, you'll be back now next week talking <laughs> probably, about something probably, else. Probably, yeah. Well, you're welcome. You're welcome. Hey, nice to Thank see you. you both, and enjoy the premiere tonight. Have Thank a great you. night. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yes. Um, Anthropoid is out on Friday, the 9th of September.